welcome to the Lord's house as we gather together to worship on this third Sunday of Easter. Uh, today is the day we recognize Jesus as being our good shepherd. And he's not like the hireling who cares nothing for the sheep and only for himself, who flees when he sees the wolf coming, rather than Jesus is the good shepherd who seeks out his scattered sheep to deliver them. He gathers them and feeds them in rich pasture. He binds up the broken and strengthens the sick. He lays down his life for wandering and wayward sheep. On the cross, Christ bore in his body the attacks of the predators of sin, and death, and the devil for you that you might be saved. For you were straying like sheep, but now have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Uh, please be so kind as to uh, fill out the little friendship pads that are found along the center aisle and pass them down the queue so that we can uh, keep our records up to date so we can better respond to your needs. <coughs> Is there anything that was left out of our announcement sheet that needs to be especially brought to our attention today? I ask you to bear with me. My voice is almost gone, so 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 we'll be depending upon the uh, upon the microphone quite a bit today. Uh, so that's okay. Anyway, so no announcements then. Okay, our order for worship this morning is the Office of Matins, starting on page 219. But first we begin with singing together our opening hymn number 864, Shepherd of Tender Youth, number 864. Please rise.
Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to God.
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life.
does this mean? Good, but that's pretty vague and might mislead us a bit. 
There's a romantic notion of the good shepherd that thinks the good shepherd that thinks of the good shepherd the same way that single moms think of those dirtbag baby daddies of theirs. It thinks that the goodness of the shepherd abides in his affection for the sheep. So this is like saying a good dad is a dad who likes the fun parts of being a dad. And a good shepherd is a shepherd who likes to pet and cuddle his sheep for his own amusement. He's good at deriving pleasure for, from others. Now, in fairness, that idea about God is not completely out of place in the New Testament. The Lord does, in fact, hold you in quite deep affection. He does love you as a father loves his children. He does derive pleasure from you. But he also loves you as a husband loves his wife. He loves you as a colleague and a comrade. His bond and love for you embraces all of the ways humans love one another, but more purely, without any self-interest or jealousy or fear. So there's nothing wrong with thinking of, Je of Jesus as the kindly, gentle lover of sheep. Fine. But as correct as that sentiment might be, it just isn't what these passages are really about. He isn't saying, I am the gentle lover of the sheep. He is saying, I am the callous, the good shepherd. That means that he is the right shepherd, the fitting, the uniquely qualified and best shepherd for sinners. He is, in fact, the only shepherd who can actually bear this title. David and his sons were only types. Shadows of the gracious rule of the callous, the good shepherd. So also our pastors are but echoes of the true shepherd. That is what the word callous means. It means good, right, fitting. It means true, beautiful, and accurate. It means competent, good for you, and worthy of praise. Our Lord's primary purpose in this proclamation is to deny the claims of all, the, of all other shepherds. He denies the claim of the many shepherd gods and kings of the Greeks and other pagans. And at the same time, he denies the claim of the Pharisees, priests, and the other various Jewish sects. If you are a shepherd, whether you are King David or some pastor in a church, you must be an under-shepherd. A shepherd who shepherds not his own sheep, but who is himself a sheep of the cows, the good shepherd and whose office is to proclaim that shepherd as the receiver and savior of sinners, because that shepherd, the Kalos, the good shepherd, is the one who is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so I should wait for a little bit. That's okay. The Lord can make this claim that he is the Kalos, the good shepherd, because he is good in the sense of morality. He is morally perfect, without sin. But his claim does not come from morality, but from faithful obedience and sacrifice. The good shepherd, the Kalos shepherd, is the true shepherd because he gives his life for the flock. He overcomes the wolf by filling the wolf's mouth with his own body, and thus saves the sheep from being lost. He is one with the Father, so his people, his sheep, bought with his own blood, become one with the Father. One flock, one shepherd. He is the King Messiah of shepherding love. The great hope and expectation of the rabbis who taught before Christ was that the Messiah would unite all the Jews of Palestine, all of the Jews of the Diaspora, around the Roman Empire, and all of the Gentiles together into one flock. They taught that King Messiah would destroy the temple and usher in a new age, a new law and covenant, and there would be no separation of Jew and Gentile. This, in large part, is why the rulers of the Jews feared Jesus. They weren't so afraid that he was a fraud. They were afraid that he was the Messiah, and they didn't want a Messiah. Not like that. They didn't want the Gentiles or the end of the temple. 
Our Lord then is claiming that by sacrifice, He, the Calus, the Good Shepherd, will reconcile sinners to the Father and make everyone into one flock. This is the character of the true and noble Shepherd. He is beautifully fit for this purpose, competent, good, worthy of praise. All that is confessed in the term Kalos. Again, the goodness of our shepherd is not in his affection, but in his sacrifice. And if his affection is the cause of his sacrifice, then note this, it is not his affection for us, but his affection for his father. Now, I understand that's a tough lesson when we've been raised on the corn syrup theology of the gentle lover of the sheep. I'm sorry, but it has its rewards. In the first place, it's biblical. It comes out of our Lord's own description of his mission and his motives, and not from some mewling attempt to be winsome or nice. Secondly, it takes the focus off of us and places it where it belongs, on him. He lays down his life. He takes it up again. The Father loves him because of it. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We are but the spoils of war. The plunder render, rendered to the Son by a grateful and affectionate Father. We are the sheep of a different fold, brought in without pedigree or works spared from the higher hands. We have heard his voice in his word as given by the Spirit. We have heard him call our names in holy baptism and wrap them in his own name. We have heard his promise and in him we also know his Father. The charge that he was given to save us that he has fulfilled because he is good. He truly is Kalos. And he is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds forever in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. We continue now on page 223 with Sin and Tiyakar, the, the, the Te Deum. Uh, please rise.
reading now on page 227 of the prayers beginning with the cure. <clears throat> Trust Him, 
seek help and comfort in Him, heartily obey His voice, and obtain eternal salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Thank you. 